hey, how about that new uh, intro I got there, huh? Yeah, ooh, ah. yeah whatever. Anyways, um, oh, the intro uh, was something I you download uh, for Adobe After Effects, and then you can change the font, or not the font, but you can change the text and. I modified it to be a lot shorter. It was meant to be like a intro title sequence for a movie or something. Anyways, um, today is a hopefully short video on this little gadget. This is a um, battery voltage monitor. Um, all it does is you give it a set voltage uh, using by hooking it up to what I do is I hook it up to a bench power supply set the voltage that I want it to go off on and you hook it up to a battery and the battery when the voltage drops below a certain voltage like if it's been sitting for a while or it's got a really slow a really light load on it and you want to know when it's um, discharged the LED will come on and the, the little piezoelectric alarm will go off. And so uh, zoom out here a little bit and what we have here is a battery with a set voltage. We have my voltmeter. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to hook up my bench power supply to this. And I already know the voltage is higher than the alarm is set for. And then we're going to hook the voltmeter up to it. Try not to short anything out. So you can see that we have more than uh, 12 volts. Not sure why that's showing backward voltage. Anyways, um, The, uh, let's say this is the voltage of a fully charged battery. Uh, what you do is you adjust your power supply down to Stand by. Okay, well, you know, I guess it helps if you hook the uh, probes up correctly on the voltmeter. Anyways, so to simulate um, a battery getting low, we'll run this the power supply down until this goes off. And then we're going to run it to the voltage we want it to go off at. Around 12.2 volts is a approximately 50% charge on a battery. So you adjust this potentiometer.
That's annoying. Bump that up. Get that to the voltage about 12.2 volts. This is not a precision um, bench power supply, so let's try this again. Try to get my hand out of the way. So you want it to just come on. So, now, I have a battery here that I already know the voltage is low on, 12.16 volts, so if we hook this up, we hook it up correctly, Jesus. The alarm goes off. Uh, voltage draw on this when it's not, when the alarm isn't going off is very, 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 very small. Um, I'm not sure of the exact amount. I'd have to look it up, but it's probably like around or less than 20 milliamps. Um, could be even lower than that. I'll have to check the specs. If I can find them, I'll post them. I'll put them in the, the video. Uh, before I found these, I had a, I've been trying to find these for a long time on eBay, and I couldn't find them. I, I mean, no matter how hard I tried, I never was finding anything like this. Well, can't remember how I found it, but they... They don't call them a battery battery monitor. They call them something to do. It'll be in the title of this uh, uh, this video. But they, they use the word accumulator, and they didn't have the word battery in it at all. You know, it just shows that if you're going to sell something, you really want to um, get things translated correctly. Uh, there's not much to this. It's a common circuit. In fact, they may have even stole it, possibly from a blog I have. Because um, I have made two of these. One of them is in a Makita drill that I converted to, lith to LiPo, which I, instead of using a circuit board, I did it as what they call dead bug where I just turned the chip upside down and soldered everything to it and then potted it. Um, if I can find the picture I'll, or part of the video, I'll include it in this one. You know, probably around here. So, then I made another one, and this one's a little bit better. I used perf board, and um, it has basically the same components. It has this is an LM358 P LM358 P. I'm not sure what mine is. If I can even read it. Um, the first one I made, I recovered the chip out of an old AT power supply. Um, if I can remember the, the name, I'll look that up and post it on uh, as a subtitle here. Um, and then it uses, uh, I don't know if it's a transistor or what it is, but really this is just perf board and old phone wire and just whatever I had laying around and the only part I actually ordered 
was this piezo alarm. Uh, the main difference with this one is it's not adjustable. It could be adjustable, but I didn't really care to be adjustable. What I did is I put a pot in there, set it to the correct voltage, and then uh, read that uh, value and then got the closest resistor to it and soldered that into the circuit. But it works exactly the same. Um, and it's set to 12.2 volts. Now, why did I do this? Why do I need this? Um, well, a couple of years ago, three or four years ago, when I was able to do more camping, I have a pop-up trailer that requires a, a uh, deep cycle battery. And the deep cycle battery, um, you know, since I wasn't using it most of the year, I had it on a trickle charger. I had it on one of those really cheap Harbor Freight trickle chargers. Which, by the way, if I can find a picture of one, I will post it. Do not buy it. They are absolute shit. They are crap. They are garbage. Um, I bought two of them. They put, two, they put out too high of an amperage on the trickle charge, and they boil the water off. And they killed two of my batteries. One battery they killed because the device died, and either it had no reverse, no uh, diode to prevent reverse voltage, or it failed, and it drained the battery down to zero. I'm not talking, there was a couple of volts left, there was a half a volt left, there was nothing left. It was zero dead as a doornail. The other uh, one ran the battery, it boiled the water off, and it uh, exposed the plates, which is a huge no-no. So any of my flooded lead-acid batteries that I have on a charger um, in my house, I have some in the car, and I'm not too worried about those. Um, I've since got much better um, trickle chargers or battery maintainers that don't constantly supply voltage. Basically, they monitor the voltage when it gets below a certain amount, they start charging again, um, which is a lot better than a constant trickle charge or even, I guess, what they call a float charge. Um, because if you get the wrong one, you'll you'll boil your battery dry. So, I mean, that's basically it. Um, I really recommend. Oh, and so these are not very expensive. I think they range in price from around a dollar something to three dollars, shipping included, shipping not included. Um, I highly recommend that if you're going to buy these, you find a buyer, an eBay seller, that um, has as high of a uh, feedback score as you can get, preferably above 99%. Anything below 99%, you're, you're taking a chance of even getting them. Uh, they. I also recommend that you do not pay less than about $3 for them. Um, it seems the cheaper this stuff is, the less likely you are to get it. And also, uh, most eBay, China eBay sellers prefer you order as many as you can. They really don't like shipping single items. They won't tell you this, it's just something I've learned from a guy who lived in Shenzhen and uh, talk to the people. Um, I, one of the things I was worried about is whether it had reverse voltage protection because I, um, well, and I don't know and I don't actually, I'm not actually going to test that. Um, so, 
I think that's it. Really quick video.